G'day viewers, Jason Joondalup Electrical Services. Um, I just thought I'd do a little video on something I get asked a fair bit. I do get people ring me up and, you know, sort of say, oh look, you know, I've got these set of batteries that I've sort of wired up and I've got this inverter and I've got all the gear, I just need you to hook it up. Um, can you do it? Uh, so I thought I'd talk about this a little bit and what the boundaries are as to what you as a homeowner can do and what we can do as licensed electrical contractors or electrical workers. Um, this is applicable to Western Australia, um, but it's basically the same rules Australia wide, but I'm just speaking from what I know, which is in Western Australia. Um, so if, if you are a homeowner and you've made something up, whether it be a set of batteries and an inverter, um, you know, like a UPS for a, your home, a computer, a fridge, something like that. If you've made something up and it simply plugs into the PowerPoint, then that's up to you, What whatever you do. If you're stupid enough to build something <laughs> that's going to give you a shock, then that's on you. Um, you as a homeowner can really do what you want so long as it's only plugged in to the wall outlet. Now, I'm not saying go out and build your own systems. Obviously, I am definitely not encouraging DIY, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, always engage the licensed electrical contractor to do electrical work. But the reality is, is that if you're plugging into a PowerPoint, then that's on you what you decide to do. Western Power inspectors and um, building and energy inspectors, electrical inspectors, will only come after the easy targets. I can tell you that right now after 25 years of experience. And the easy targets are us, the ones that are licensed and um, electrical contractors, electrical workers, all those that are licensed. We're the ones they come after because we're an easy target. Um, dragging a homeowner through the court system and trying to get a conviction for doing something they shouldn't have done it, it's just, it's not gonna happen unless they kill someone or something drastic like that. Um, that's my experience anyway. I'm sure people will have their other own opinions and that sort of thing. And again, I'm not encouraging DIY, absolutely not. Um, but that's the reality of it. If it's plug-in, then you can pretty much go for your life. Um, if it's plug-in and you want me to do it as an electrician, then everything has to be done to standard and it has to be compliant, obviously. Um, if you're building something and you're hardwiring it, so hardwiring it means that you're fixing it to the wiring on the house via connecting it permanently in a way that it, anything other than a plug, basically, if it's a screwed terminal or something like that, anything other than a plug that's fixed wiring, that's a different story. Um, you may well get in. Um, they might be more inclined to pursue you if you're doing non-compliant fixed wiring, especially if it's dangerous. Now, if you have an electrician to come out to your house and work on your house, and they see stuff that is just outright dangerous, then they're obliged to disconnect it and make it safe and to report it. If they see something that is not, com not compliant, but it's okay, it's not gonna kill anyone, um, then they are still obliged to report it, and they would do that by way of recording it on their electrical safety certificate. Um, or calling a inspector and reporting it. Um, but again, I can tell you right now, Western, the inspectors are really not that proactive. They will take the easy way out. Um, I've tried r reporting some really black and white stuff that's been done by people and that is really dangerous and they could not give a fuck. They will take after the, they will go after the easy targets, the licensed ones. Anyway, bit of a rant, sorry. Um, uh, where was I going? Lost my train of thought. Um, so if it's fixed wiring, they may well pursue you. Um, now, as far as products go, like if you've acquired some batteries and you've acquired an inverter and you've bought the stuff online and you want someone like myself to come out and, you know, connect it all and wire it all up properly, I'm talking about solar equipment, then it's not that easy either. So firstly anything that is fixed wiring connected to the electrical installation and the network or the grid must have approval from um, the network operator and in WA that's Western Power or uh, Horizon Power 
Um, so we have to, when we when when you come to me and you say you want to buy a solar system, I have to submit applications to Western Power. I have to contact Synergy and get a retailer reference number. And then with that reference number, I take it to Western Power. I submit drawings and applications. And in that process, there is a drop down menu and I have to select the products that I'm using. Uh, because those products are on that list because they've been tested and proven to be okay and to work in harmony with Western Power's network. That's important. Um, those rules are there to protect our network and make sure everyone has a decent power supply and there are no uh, issues such as high voltage or um, lines, uh, the network being energised when it should really be shut down, which I featured on a... Oh, I haven't put that video out yet. This one's awesome. It's a really, really dodgy solar edge system. Brand new, 45 grand's worth, a complete and utter F up. Um, probably the worst I've ever seen. I'll release that later. Um, but anyway, when this was in backup mode, it was energizing the grid. So Western Power could be out there trying to turn the grid off, um, but they've got this solar inverter, which is still active and energizing the grid because it wasn't wired up properly. Um, Anyway, so going through that process, you can't ring me up and say, hey, I've bought this inverter online, I've bought these batteries online, um, neither of which I recommend doing anyway. Um, can you wire it up for me? No, I can't because I'm responsible for that. I have to submit tickets, I have to submit notices, and the equipment has to be approved for use, not only in Australia, because you might find some products are on the Clean Energy Council approved list, um because they've tested it and given it the stamp of approval but it might not be on western power powers list of approved products they do have different requirements to the rest of the country um so that's the sort of parameters there if you're off grid but you're not connected to the network again that's a bit of a different story if you're a homeowner and you're building your own little off-grid system um it's kind of on you if, a, and if an inspector happens to stumble across your pop property and has a look at it, they will shut the system down and give you an inspector's order to rectify it. Um, and you may face penalties if that's pursued and you don't do the right thing. Again, as an electrical contractor, if you've bought things that are not connected to the grid, it doesn't matter. Those products still need to be approved for use in Australia. They don't have to be approved to be connected to the network by Western Power, but they do have to be approved for use in Australia. Um, the other thing is be aware that you still can claim the solar subsidy for solar panels on off-grid systems, but you must use a um, accredited solar person, who is also an electrician, obviously, but not only that, you must use products that are on the Clean Energy Council approved products list to um, claim the subsidy for the solar panels. So if you're off grid and you're thinking, I'll just buy all my own shit and get a Sparky to come and wire it up, it's not really that simple. You are far better off paying a Sparky, getting the, the products that are approved, claiming the subsidy, and you then hopefully, if you listen to my other videos and you follow the process, you end up with a quality, reliable system that's gonna give you years and years of service. So hopefully that's cleared up a few questions about you know what you can do and what you can't do, because I do get a lot of calls about that sort of thing as to what you, what you, what you can and what you can't do. Um, a lot of the fires related to lithium batteries are from products that have either been modified outside of the parameters of the manufacturer, um, let's use say a Suron e-bike for example um, that bike has been built to work with the onboard charger and that battery system and that motor and it all works and it's happy and it's fine then someone else goes and makes a bigger battery for it or a more powerful motor and you start modifying that's when you have problems so any if you have a fear, and I know there's a lot of people out there that do, and it's it's justified of lithium batteries catching fire, make sure you're buying approved products. Don't buy them, okay? They are terrible. Um, that'll be another video at a later stage. I don't even know why I'm wearing this shirt. It's, it's an old one. I did used to have an affiliation with LG um, using their partner uh, panels. Um, but of course, LG panels are no longer in Australia. I just grabbed this shirt this morning because it was the closest one. 
Um, make sure you use uh, products that you can buy from a retailer in Australia, like you know e-scooters. Don't buy them online from China. Buy them from a retail outlet in Australia that has good support, and don't modify them. Okay, I know a lot of I'm going to get a lot of hate for that, but don't modify them. Um, my son has a Segway scooter, a nine bot. I'm perfectly comfortable with that on charge in the garage. He also wanted to buy one of these um, e-bike kits where you buy the battery and the back wheel that slots into your mountain bike. And I said no. And I said, if you buy one of them, it stays outside and away from the house when it's on charge because I don't want it anywhere near the house. They're the sort of things, the non-approved products that are being bought online that cause problems. Um, so anything to do with batteries, especially lithium batteries, you're always better buying from a reputable retailer, um, not online. I think that's all I've got to say. I'll make another bat video on uh, LG batteries soon. I've got a site at the moment, one of my own sites, with two LG Chem batteries, really badly swollen um, from overheating, and LG have taken 10 months to replace um, those batteries and that's the second lot but I'll do that video at a later date alright cheers guys